Hello everyone, welcome to the Art of Comics. I'm your host, Andres, and uh, today I wanted to get back to these famous artist courses, and we're gonna do less than three now. We did the, the first two a little while back, and I wanna keep these on our radar. There are 24 total. Uh, these were correspondence courses that you would order these uh, binders, and they came in three binders, and uh, it was 24 lessons. And each lesson had a different art topic about illustration and art. And you would have an assignment that you would turn in. You would mail off your art assignment to these artists and they would go through it, critique it, and send you back some feedback. Uh, it was, you know, this is all pre-internet. This was done in the 50s and 60s. And uh, some just brilliant, brilliant uh instruction in these things. And so I'm a huge fan of Albert Dorn, Norman Rockwell, Al Parker, Austin Briggs, Whitcomb, Fawcett, all these guys. You know, I have their like art books. So when I heard about this courses years ago, I thought that'd be so cool. And I found these on eBay. So you can get these binders on eBay. And I think I paid around 90 bucks, 80 bucks for the whole set, which is a little pricey. But um, to say they're vintage is is uh, an understatement. They're super cool. Um, so I'm sharing them with you guys. I'm kind of walking through them. Now lesson three, composition. You don't really need to know the other lessons. The other lessons was like artist materials. And then I think lesson two was um, form, just basic form stuff. But this one is really good. And it's really um, important. It's in depth and it has, um, it has a lot of like very um, critical like lessons and and, and uh, just it's very it's super important. It's one of those things that we never really master, but the the principles are really really important. So let's just go ahead and, and start going through it. So talking about composition and really composition is as it says here the selection and arrangement of elements within a picture space. Okay, the idea is you're con conveying some information. That's, you know, when I'm working on comics and I'm thinking about a panel or something like this, right? And I'm working on, you know, I'm working on some, I did some live drawing, right? These are, I'm just working on these like, how do I want these panels? What do I want these figures to be? How do I want this to be broken down? I, I gotta think of what's the, what's the information do I want? What, what, am, what am I communicating? What's the simplest, easiest way? to communicate and what's that arrangement in space, right? <clears throat> so it's the relation of elements in a picture place showing space, right? And that, in, that idea of composition is more important than, than even your ability to draft. So your ability to draft, you can be the best draftsman in the world if you cannot if your picture's not composed properly, the, um, there's gonna be this element that's missing and we won't be satisfied, right? So what's that basic idea? What are you trying to convey and, and how we put them in space? So <clears throat> the picture starts with things in your mind. It talks about how if we said, um, I want you to imagine a couple sitting on a bench in a park, there's a lot of different images that might, that might come to your mind. Um, and each one of these will convey a different kind of emotion or thought, right? If the figures are farther in the background, this might convey a different meaning than say them close up, right? Or in a medium shot. So each of these positionings or images in your mind kind of convey a different, a different set of information. Um, and so what we do is we have these images in our mind and then we gotta start putting them on paper the artist thinks on paper. I like that. Artist thinks on paper. And they say that the pencil is the artist's thinking tool. Okay? The artist thinking tool is a pencil. And uh, we think on paper. So that's what we're doing. When I'm doing, even when I'm doing my sketches, right, I'm doing all these different, um, you know, I'm doing these, all these different, these, these different kind of composition. I'm, I'm just thinking. I'm just kind of like, looking at, okay, do I want this? Do I want that? You know, I'm just looking at 
what works, right? I'm kind of playing around. And the basic thing that I'm doing actually here is this arranging of shapes, these elements, okay? There are, um, so here we talk about, okay, here's these elements. The, the, the problem is we're showing this gunshot, uh, this kind of gun battle here between two, two cowboys. Um, how do we place them on the picture plane is conveys different information. So when we talk about composition, you know, here we see this, you know, first we might just put the, uh, the, the gunman here really, really in the foreground, but then, uh, the, the background, the, the figure that's being shot is way off to the side, right? And so this one really dominates, you know, and maybe that's the information you want. And then this one doesn't really work because everybody's kind of like off kiltered a bit and um, there's no dominant shape. The dominant shape is gonna be clearer, it's gonna be larger, right? The, the shapes that aren't as important are gonna be farther in the background. I'm gonna see that further in some of the things, but here, now here we, tr now we try overlapping the things, you know, but this tree now, this tree now is taking center place. Like why is that tree most important? And then we flip it around a little bit more. Now we see, okay, this looks a little bit better. We still have our dominant figure. Now we have our subject, this line's going right to him and the tree's in the background. So we just organize shapes. You know, it would be kind of fun actually as an exercise to do this, you know, have cutouts of like your big shapes. And maybe that's what I should do for some of these panels is, you know, have a cutout of shapes and kind of just see what works best. Uh, here's another, you know, another composition problem. To arrange in the picture space below the four elements shown, a mountain, a lake, a rock, and a boat. So here's our elements, mountain, lake, rock, and boat. And we can organize them in different ways. Showing them closer up gives them more emphasis, right? So we can see in this way, the rock is small, the boat, right? Here, the boat is very important. Here, this rock is super important, the boat's in the background. So I actually, I like both of these. That one's boring for me, but you know. Um, so you kind of like look at those kind of, here's another one. We're arranging the, the woman, the door, the, uh, the lamp and the table. And now we can kind of see what we're emphasizing, right? The woman here, the, the, the room, and then here the table. This one, this has a different, this one feels very different than this one, doesn't it, right? So again, arranging shapes. Uh, the four main elements of composition, the picture area, right, which is your kind of your space. You know, in comics, it'd be like the panel. Although there's another composition of the page itself, right? So there's, for comics, there's panel compositions, but then also the larger whole of the page composition. Uh, so there's picture area, there's depth, right? Which smaller figures are in the distance. That's kind of just the general, general way that goes. There's line, right? There's all the lines that are happening and where are those meaning, the, the line of the direction of the line, where our eyes go. Our eyes first go here, they go down here, the point to the gun to the men. So the direction lines, and in the value, you know, this is where we're learning about, again, another way to move our eye is by value, how that moves around. And so we're going to look at these four principles or elements of composition as we go through this. Again, this is a really great lesson. I, I think this is like, this is one that I need to kind of always go back to um, because it's so important. Okay, so here we talk about uh, the picture area. So we're just gonna hit, hit each of these. So the first one is picture area. Uh, looking at how we frame this. This is another way of saying how are you framing this up, right? You, hey, here's your image, how are you gonna frame him? Okay, you make him perfectly, you know, symmetrical in the first shot. You put him super far back so your frame is big, right? Isolation, you know, close up, 
he's thinking something. What is he thinking about, you know? So you're moving the frame around. Same thing here. No matter what our subject, the same principle applies. For example, we can make a small child appear to overpower the picture space or a huge truck seem isolated and remote. The point is to choose the appropriate size for the effect we want. What's the effect? What's the emotion, right? Usually it's about emotion, right? Or, or the conveying that information, whatever that might be. A lot of times it's emotion, especially like advertising. And these, all these, these guys were all advertised. They did advertising in, you know, uh, Saturday Evening Post and Collier and that kind of stuff. So that's kind of where the illustration was coming from. Um, so here's also like varying your size with the purpose. So talking about now the picture plane is the same. We're not changing the picture plane, but we're actually now we're, we're varying the distance and dominance of space by these figures. So we bring these figures up a little bit closer. We get a little different information in there. Same thing here, we're bringing it up. The figures are mountains, the effect is the same. In the view of the mountain on the left, we immediately feel the dominance of the sky. But if our mountain takes up most of the picture space, we get the feeling of a huge, overwhelming bulk. Right? So overlapping, this is kind of interesting um, because here they, they give you some do's and don'ts about overlapping and how, um, how you move things around really kind of like creates that composition that is right. And overlapped objects really are a good way to kind of organize and vary the elements. So the more variation generally in images, the more pleasing it is kind of compositionally. So, um, you know, if you put everything like this, this is kind of poor overlapping, right? We, everything's in a straight line. There's not that much variation. Things are completely obscured, so it doesn't really work. You're moving things around. This is better, but with the apple's still in the way, right? It still just feels odd. But you put it there, and now we feel like... So this actually doesn't overlap. So it doesn't have to overlap, but... You know, it feels a little more natural and it feels a little bit more pleasing. Cropping is another way to to overlap, where actually this is the same image. We just cropped it in. So we just crop in this, and it kind of helps us. That tree frames the the picture plane um, or the picture size, and so that kind of like works. Same thing here by cropping this in a little bit it's a little bit more more interesting. So that's another thing to do is like think about cropping. Um, applying comp uh, common sense to composition. A lot of it's just kind of common sense, top heavy. Now, you could break these rules, of course, right? You know, there's famous paintings that where people like break these rules of like, everything at the top or the bottom or these kind of these kind of things so you of course you can always like change these but um you know crowded here's a not not really good one right uh everything is competing for attention where all these they all do feel like they're taking the exact amount of space blackness on the plane so it just feels like doesn't feel right if you were to put maybe three of those trees all together here and have that blank you'd feel like a little better um, yeah, this isn't, this is kind of a super quick little thought about silhouettes. When you're doing silhouettes, you really do want to have the outlines form so that you can distinguish the forms, especially if you're talking about overlapping things. So, uh, you know, when, when a person is standing and their arms and legs are all, you know, going down, you can't really see their form. That's why usually good silhouettes have some movement, have some, their limbs are out so you can see the, the uh, underneath. Same thing here, same principle here, but with the tree and the man. So whenever you're doing silhouettes, you gotta pull that out there so you can see, uh, understand it. Here's some points to remember. Don't split the picture in half. Use the whole picture area. 
Don't line things up, right? So don't make it split in half. It's actually, I think the rule is like thirds. So if this guy would have been the thirds, that would have been a little bit better, looked a little better. Don't line it up perfectly. Vary the placement, you know, of where you put things. Notice, you know, it's now in front of him. That's the difference between that one. Don't crowd the bottom. Use the upper half too. Don't center everything, right? We talked about that. And move things to the side, kind of scoot things around a little bit. Don't leave a hole. Make good use of your space. Don't let objects just touch. That's called a, uh, I think it's called a transit, transit line? I wanna say transit, something like that. Uh, yeah, if it touches the very tip or the bottom of something, it flattens the image. Um, Howard Chicken taught me that. I, I wanna say it's called a transit line, transient line. You'll see that sometimes if, it, if an image hits the bottom of the panel or something like that, or the corner, it, you gotta redraw that, you gotta fix that because jack stuff up. Uh, overlap the objects. Uh, here we got uh, applying the print. There's some. There's a Norm, Norman Rockwell, excuse me, Norman Rockwell um, example, and we look at his beautiful covers from the Saturday Evening Post, um, and we kind of can see a little bit. He's just breaking this down by shapes, composition. So we kind of looking at those principles. Depth is the other principle. Depth is really just the illusion of distance or this third dimension. We are drawing on paper. Everything's two dimensional, but we're giving the illusion of a third dimension. We do that with depth. That's, um, you know, overlapping things, drawing things smaller as they're farther away. All these are kind of techniques of drawing that uh, depth. We don't really go into perspective really in this yet, but it's just kind of basically showing us ways just by using size and overlapping how we can do that so you can see here um, these different ways of doing that. although he does you know has, has the horizontal line there to give you that this this is kind of a cool like way to look at it too and this is a uh, this is really hard this is I, I find this a challenge to render but you know here's a poor use of three-dimensional space all the figures are all kind of in the same line this is a little bit better. They're in this line. And then now here, this is the far most interesting arrangement. The figures are overlapped to make full use of the three-dimensional plane. So this is kind of interesting way to show the figures and draw them. And no, notice, you do not get overlapping with either of these. With this you do, so you get that overlapping. So you're gonna to have to draw through your figures. You're gonna to have to draw these like cylinders and things like that, draw through them, and then go back and erase and do that. Uh, we talked about draw th drawing through, I think in lesson two, or is it lesson, maybe it's lesson, oh no, it might be in lesson, lesson four, okay. Um, same principle applies here, so the same idea. We don't do it in a straight line. This is way too simplistic, but if you scoot it in, you overlap, you're gonna create this kind of path. So that's kind of neat. Um, now we have some more great examples, and this is why I bought the book, right? Are these great, these great images. And I, I would hope that some of these are in color, but they're all in black and white in this book. I think maybe later on, at least when we get into color, we'll do some color ones, but um, because these are beautiful paintings. It'd be fun to have them in color, but you can imagine in the 50s when this was printed, I think this is the 1958 version, um, it would've been pretty expensive to do that. Okay, so here in this composition, notice that the sofa appears narrower as it leads into the depth of the picture. The overlapped curtains and the decorative uh, rooster create depth in the wall plane. The cropping at the front brings us right into the scene. Right, so he crops right into the couch. So we don't even get the end of the couch. We get like right in the couch. We go in there, you have the rooster, you have those curtains, having that depth, you see these lines, and we get a little bit of that 
perspective going it's getting smaller as we go farther out so um you know here he's using these props to help us get that depth here this is another one of al parker um in this illustration al parker wanted to show a woman sad and alone placed her against the expanse of a background so her loneliness could be felt the empty chair at the front tells the rest of the story. The dinner service is arranged in depth to lead I across the table to hers. Right? So again, pushes in on her. Yeah, great stuff. I mean, just that, this, that little like um, napkin, it's so pretty. Beautiful line here, moving us, moving us down by this is uh, Peter Helk. Here's the shape, talk about shapes. Groupings in depth. Here's stall. You break this down. We've got this main figure here. But this line is perfect. It actually just, just reads perfectly. Next element is line. So for line, we kind of see where the line is taking us. Okay. The line shows us what is important. It shows us the type of directional movement that makes us makes our eye go someplace. Here, these lines are working against good composition, and these are working towards comp. This is going boom. Everything is pointing towards the church, right? You see that these 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 uh, clouds, this road are going to the church. So we're like boom, church is important. Here. We don't know what's going on. It's there is no the church is important, but our, we're going off this way. So this is like got some issues, right? This one's a little bit better. This one goes there, but now it's a little bit. It's more interesting, of course, with the variation of the tree and these these branches actually lead there too, to the to the church. Here, this is bad, right? This is just. The branches are going up. The street is going this way. You know, nothing is really guiding us towards this. The goal would be, you know, we want to look towards the, the church. It's not, not happening. Another way lines work, the lines in the figure. This, these two figures, uh, there's no lines that are like connection here. There's nothing here happening. Here is a little better, right? But now with the hand, now we have some kind of movement. We have some kind of action here. Same thing here. Notice the tangent. Tangent. I said transient or tr whatever. Tangent. It just came to me. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> so here's a tangent. Right, that hand and that and that that uh, mountain. We got to move that. So he moves that up a bit. Kind of brings this up. And now that tree works in. Leave lines going to object and picture, yeah. And here's, we're gonna see some examples of these lines. This is uh, Robert Fawcett, I love his stuff. Just brilliant, brilliant artist. Just, my gosh, I can't say enough about this guy. Uh, he just, you know, you're only good because you do it all day long for years and years. And uh, he did. Um, just beautiful stuff. Huge fan of these action. Look at this. Austin Briggs, one of my very favorites, as you guys know. Look at the line. So, and then this curve. You see, it's really through the, the her body, and, and and really the values, right? Peter Helk. Look at these little lines. They're all kind of going towards her, this line here. Oh, tangent. Yeah, he talks about tangent. Yeah. Tangents. Don't arrange objects so that a line on one will meet at a line on another. <clears throat> They'll form a longer line. And draw the eye away from the center of interest. Picture corners. That's another thing. No corners. <laughs> I, I put a little note in here. Picture corners. Due to the meeting of the frame lines are strong and attract attention. Don't let any of the picture's main lines run into corners. 
because they draw your attention. Don't let them go into the corner. Move them away from it. Value. The last element is value uh, when we talk about composition. Value is uh, the darkness, basically creating mood, um, and composing things. So here, all white, dark, mediums. You know, this kind of tells us also helps us with the time of day. Uh, definitely value helps us with emotion and that kind of stuff. So here's, here's your, your elements. Now let's play with value. What can they do for us? You know, no, this is really nice, of course. Different values. Creating a center of interest with value. So obviously the strongest and most attention getting contrast is achieved by placing the light shape in the picture against the dark one. So when you're having this contrast, that's what the most attention getting, right? Right here. The reason why this painting works so darn well is because he's in black and it's right up against almost like a silhouette of the light cast by this, I think a lantern and his, the light on him, right? That's why this works so well. Same thing with here. She's in dark, if she was in a white dress, this would not work at all. But because she's in a dark dress and he's in this white school clothes, it works perfectly. It's that contrast, it's that it's hard lines. You know, here's we're talking about different keys, middle key, high key, just the level of value you bring things to and how you can, um, you know, there's, you do things with everything's a high value, kind of mediums, darks, or really what you want is kind of full range. I mean, you could do things in different styles, of course, but the more com pleasing composition would be the full range. And the last page was um, just looking at some more kind of evolution of, of composition. This was Albert Dorn doing this where, uh, trying to figure out what the composition for this page is. And so he started out these different ideas and uh, you can kind of see the evolution of what he did differently, how the berm is different and everything. And that's the final one. That's composition. You learn to draw by drawing, people. Um, this is 26 pages, and there's like so much in here, actually. I just kind of jammed through it. But um, this is one that I need to reference often. It's something to really think about because composition is so critical. Next, we'll talk about drawing the human form, which is, uh, which is pretty fun. This is more of just a basic drawing one, which probably will go by a lot quicker. Uh, and then after that, we do some other kind of some fun stuff. So thanks all for watching. Check out all my videos every Tuesday, every Saturday, every Thursday. We're doing film stuff. Check out my Patreon. A lot of my Patreon stuff is for free. Uh, and if you get a dollar, you can see all my comics. I do some live stuff too. So thanks a lot for watching. Appreciate you guys. Have a good one. Bye.